Hey guys, how's it going? It is your boy, Manga Manjuru, and I'm here to do my manga review for My Hero Academia Manga Chapter 376. Sorry about this, I'm a little bit hoarse at the moment, been speaking a while, it's also very cold, that's why I'm wearing my little My Hero Academia jacket on me. But yes, I'm here to be doing my review for this chapter, and when it comes to this chapter, there's a few things that we really need to talk about. For starters, this is a relatively short chapter, only approximately nine pages, as well as we do get a color page uh, by Horikoshi himself when it comes to the popularity poll. So we're going to tackle that a little bit in this video. We may make that an entirely separate video. I don't know for certain, but we're going to touch on a few people in the actual cover page and talk more about the chapter proper and what this chapter is, which is primarily a setup chapter. So with that little rambling aside, let's go over the popularity poll. I believe this would be My Hero Academia's eighth popularity poll since it's its eighth year of serialization. And we get the very obvious, all in all, this is a very standard like list of popularity. You have characters, obviously Bakugo, he was number one, Deku number two, Shoto number three, but then you also get to see just very just popular characters throughout the entirety of the series. You got Hawks, Uraraka, we also see Kirishima, Endeavors up there, probably because of his storyline, and as well as we get Ida, who's always been a fan favorite, as well as, you know, Kaminari, who is also been a fan favorite people always liked him people thought he was cool and he finally made it into top 10 yeah now i think about it it's been a while since he's actually been in the top 10 so it's cool that he's there so yeah that's pretty much all i really want to talk about now i can probably go over like everyone else in their order and there's some fun people on that list that i would like to talk about but let's get more into the chapter proper and like I said, this is a pretty short chapter where we're pretty much focusing on the immediate aftermath of Uraraka as well as Fropi going through the portal. They make an interaction with Toga and how Toga confirms that she doesn't really care about them, that they are very stubborn and that she's not the same person that she was previously, which uh, that's just pretty much like foreshadowing or just the telltale sign that, yeah, no, she does have some personality or she does still have some similarities to who she was and that most likely Uraraka and Fropi are going to be the ones to pretty much free toga from this and something interesting that we see is that we see that toga is beginning to like lose her shape she's no longer looking like twice which means that her specific time is almost up but because that's happening to her at this moment and we do not see the other twice clones or twice clones that are actually toga clones actually dissolving in this moment that means most likely that they will not have or they will not be affected but it just means that most likely than not they will be able to continue the sat men's parade and that it's not restricted by the original toga's time limit so yeah that's very cool that we get to see this as well as a big double paid spread of just seeing how much damage and destruction is being caused by both dobby's flames and toga using twice his blood to make the sat man's parade and there are some interesting lines of dialogue here you have a uh, frappy being worried about shoto being worried about shoji because they see that dobby is here but you even get a small line from shishida saying that they need to move the captured villains or that they're going to eventually die by the flames of Dobby and this is very interesting because the heroes are showing concern for the villains which makes sense they are heroes but within the story of My Hero Academia this does not appear to have been the case when it comes to the villains. Yes, we as readers know that they are people and that they should have most likely than not have attempted to save them earlier, but the fact that we are getting them actually taking more active action to make sure that these villains are saved and you have a character who thinks that heroes would try to kill her and would not consider her human and save her, this is probably setting up for the idea that we're going to be getting the heroes actively taking the villains that are in danger, getting them out of danger, and potentially sacrificing their lives to save villains because they are still people. So hopefully this is where this small panel with Shishida is coming from and where it's leading to, hopefully. But yeah, from there, we get a reunion between some members of Class 1A, Tokoyami, Sukuyomi, as well as Earphone Jack meet up with Froppy and Gravity. They begin talking about what happened to Jiro in this moment and how she just lost part of her ear. 
which is just a small price to pay when you're literally going up against the demon lord themselves and i think this is setting up for these characters potentially being the ones to be responsible for toga's defeat most likely than not you are going to be having uraraka who's going to be the one to convince toga to stop her sad man's parade but you got powerhouses like tokoyami and jiro who can do a lot of damage over a wide area and it will not take that much damage to actually cause these clones to eventually dissipate and disappear because of the fact that they are clones and that it will not take a lot of damage to actually make them disappear so most likely like i said this is setting up for that what they're going to be doing when it comes to fighting toga and this is just a running theme in this chapter we're getting to see more setup of who's going to be fighting who for instance, we see that Endeavor is about to go on a frontal attack against Dobby, aka Toya, as he's also fighting against the uh, Toga as well as twice Toga clones in this moment. So it's fun to see that as we just get Dobby trying to like chastise Endeavor, saying that, oh man, I'm so disappointed. I cannot fulfill my true goals. I really wanted to bring Shoto's corpse here, but unfortunately for you, or fortunately for you, I guess, the people that you were able to protect, the people that you cherish, at least one of them survived. And this is something very interesting that Dobby is saying. Because this could entail that Shoto may be the last living person of the Shoto family. Or that this is Dobby bringing up the idea that he killed potentially two or even three of Endeavor's sidekicks who Endeavor may have a fondness or a care for. But the only one that survived that entire ordeal was Shoto. And I'm more leaning on the sidekicks angle because if it is implying that Toya aka Dobby was responsible for the deaths of literally his entire family except for Shoto and Endeavor, uh, that's going to be very horrible and very horrifying and I just really do not want that to be the case. Even in this moment, you just have Endeavor recognizing that Dobby is using uh, Shoto's new ability as they are preparing to go in conflict with one another. And finally, the last setup that we really get in this chapter is really involving All For One. And there are some new things that he says in this chapter that really could be something that is being set up, not necessarily for this fight, but being set up for what's going on with Shigaraki and the role that he's going to be playing when coming and trying to go towards Tomer Shigaraki as he thinks to himself that everything is going according to plan, all is going according to Keikaku, and that the only thing that would make the situation better is if if Kurogiri was here so that he could get his hands on Warp Gate, which is giving him confirmation that he would like to have Warp Gate as a quirk inside of him, but that this could be some other implications that we can draw later on in the later chapters potentially. But we see that as All for One is about to go off and head towards the direction of Tomura Shigaraki, he gets stopped by Hawks, who takes some massive damage from what I'm assuming is a headbutt from All for One. And the fact that Hawks is able to survive this is amazing, even though his sword was broken in the process. This comes from... And here's where we get a really important piece of information about how we have Hawks trying to tease All for One and saying, what's in the rush? Why are you rushing towards Shigaraki? Is there something that is going on with him that you need to help him with? And you just have All for One slightly confirming that, yeah, there's something about that thing that isn't complete. So I need to go over there and do something. And you just have All for One. And this is where my favorite part comes into play as Endeavor is literally slicing off the head of a Toga Twice clone. Ox is pretty much telling Endeavor, hey Endeavor, uh, take care of Toya, I'll handle all for one. And you just have all for one in this moment, it's like, are you, are you serious? You're literally having Endeavor go up against his own son? You must be mad, you must be crazy. And you just have Hawks with the best line saying, oh no, 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 you got it all wrong. By the way, you need to shut up. As Hawks gives this line of like, you know, I'm just letting Endeavor handle a different task because you know, you've already lost to the number one hero once already. And this may be the time where All For One may say screw his entire plan and go after Hawks for that insult. As the chapter ends with Endeavor having sort of a resolve to actually go against his son and potentially fighting him maybe to the death. So yeah, that's pretty much the entirety of this chapter. This was once again a 
very much set up heavy chapter with some smaller moments that I enjoyed but not that much of actual substance. Now this could be due to the fact that it's only been 9 chapters but I do think that relatively speaking any more chapters or any more pages we would have gotten to this chapter it would have fleshed it out a little bit more most likely in the action aspect as well as potentially some more scenes involving these characters actually fighting each other and going into conflict but overall it was a fine chapter relatively short nothing really important that we really need to address besides what all for one says about that thing in reference to tomo shigaraki and what he needs to do and how he needs to get there but besides that pretty much this is all just set up for the fights the students going up against toka and her clones endeavor going up against toya and hawks going up against all for one that's pretty much what this chapter is and i'm fine with it i do not think that we are going to be on break next week but i wouldn't be surprised if that was the case but this is all I really have to say on the topic for now. Uh, what do you think of the chapter? Did you like it? Did you dislike it? Do you think the pacing is a little bit off due to the fact that it's only nine pages? Leave your thoughts down in the comments down below. Leave a like on the video if you liked it. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And don't forget to hit that notification bell to be notified for whenever I upload more content like this. Do all that cool jazz. And hopefully, I'll be able to catch you in my next video. Goodbye!